So this video is likely to have been released after I've left Tresham College, and this is some of the things that I go through along with my notes in order to cover the subject of plastic conduit at level one, level two, and in the early stages of your apprenticeship. So we're gonna look at some of the things that will match my notes. However, you might be thinking, well, I haven't got a set of Gary's notes. Well, you can go onto the eFix Apprentice Hub, okay, which is at eFix.co.uk, look for the Apprentice Hub tab, and go right to the very bottom of the page on the eFix Apprentice Hub, and you will see a download box. Within there are five books. As I shoot this video, there may be more by now. One of them says Sitting Guilds 5357, and within there is my notes that I deliver for the installation theory part of the practical within the workshop. It's about 100 pages, free to download, and this will accompany that as well, so the plastic conduit section within there. So we're gonna try and pick up some of those questions that are asked normally under multi-choice conditions at level two, and at level one normally in a small written paper, depending on whether you're doing EAL or City and Guilds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera in, I'm gonna put it over the top, and I'm gonna go through some, but not all of the things that are in my notes that cover plastic conduit and will come up potentially at your exams as you move forward. So let's bring the camera in and let's have a look at what we're gonna see. So I've done a very similar video on steel conduit and we're gonna run through some of the same sort of things on that as well. So if we talk about the sizes of plastic conduit, remember in both cases, it's the diameter, the diameter of the actual conduit itself. So it's not millimeters squared, it's not the area. It is actually the diameter of the conduit, exactly the same as in steel. The four common sizes are 16, 20, 25, and 32. So that's 20 mil, 16 mil, 32 mil and 25 mil being the diameter of the conduit itself, often used as an exam question. They come in two standard colors, which is pretty obvious from the table, standard white and standard black, but there must be a reason why we have two different colors. So we've got to think about the actual locations of which they're going to be installed in. So black PVC conduit for exam purposes will be in things like industrial environments where there's likely to be airborne dust or maybe people with filthy hands, some parts of motor vehicle workshops, etc., would be the type of question they would say. So you'd use black conduit where it's potentially a, a more dirty environment and white PVC conduit where we're talking about things like offices. So it's more aesthetically pleasing to see a white conduit maybe against a cream wall. So there's another couple for you. PVC, remind you from earlier videos we've done, PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride and exactly the same as any other PVC. It's uh, got to be installed at a temperature above zero Okay, so the PVC conduit is left on site, maybe outside in a freezing cold winter, falls below zero. You must leave it in an ambient temperature above zero for 24 hours before you can install that conduit system. Again, that used to be an old examination question, so that's worth bearing in mind. It can be left in an ambient temperature below zero once installed, but it can't be installed at temperatures below zero. Okay, so we've got those. We've got the fixings of it, okay? The standard spacer bar saddle, we looked at this when we looked at steel conduit, is pretty much the only saddle you're really gonna be working with with plastic conduit. So again, the two little screws come out, we fix and fasten the back plate to the surface, and we put the conduit in and we return the two very small screws at the front. So that's our spacer bar saddle. It comes in types, so it comes in its gauge. So we're looking at the thickness of the walls, and it's difficult for you to see here. So if you're looking at the thickness of those walls, okay, to get two differing gauges. So we're talking about it being light gauge and heavy gauge. The plastic conduit that I use in my workshop is heavy gauge, high impact, and we suggest being high impact, it can withstand the blow from a hammer. They suggest that if you're using light gauge conduit, that means the walls are a lot thinner, that it must be potentially reinforced by something else. So if you were installing a conduit system in a screed of a floor, in other words, in a concrete floor, you could get away with using light gauge PVC conduit because the concrete floor would be protecting the conduit when installed. But all the conduits we use are heavy gauge, high impact. They come in a standard length. This is not a standard length. They come in a length of three meters long. So that's pretty traditional for all of the systems now, really. Steel trunk trunking, cable tray, ladder, basket, plastic conduit, mini trunking, dado trunking, skirting trunking, all in a three meter length. We did suggest that steel conduit could still come in a 3.75 meter length, but does also come in three, so that's in a different video, so it's worth picking that up. We're gonna to tend to fix it into um, locations like boxes, and I'm sure you're doing it in the workshop using these adapters. So we've gotta work out the difference between the two adapters. So this one here that has a bush that's removable and goes inside like so, that's our female adapter. Okay, so we've got a female adapter, and then we've got one that has a ring. Okay, so we put that then into a, a box or electrical enclosure, and then the ring on the inside. 
and that one is a male adapter. Remembering they do them in 16, 20, 25, and 32 mil adapters. So that's a male adapter. This one's a female adapter. Boxes are very similar to those in uh, steel conduit we looked at before, and they're in my notes as well. So it's just an example of three. So we've got a, in this case, 20 mil black PVC T box. We've got a through box and one that we often called an end box, but it's usually called termination or a terminal box. So that's our conduit end box. So how do we secure our conduit into here? We cut clean square our ends, etc., at the right length and they're pushed into place into here. But actually in the real world and not in the workshop where we're just obviously just pushing them in and leaving it. Okay, so that one's a little bit broken then. So yeah, just pushing it and leaving it. Obviously, because we'd like to use the boxes again. In the real world, that's not the case. When we're going into the box themselves or into our adapters, we're gonna to need to secure them into position. And we secure them into the position using a PVC solvent weld. In other words, an adhesive. Okay, and the exam questions will say, when working with PVC solvent weld, what must you ensure? You must ensure that you're wearing the appropriate PPE. So appropriate gloves, maybe, a mask because it's got quite a vapor with it and goggles the last thing you want to do is obviously put some of this into one of your eyes okay so that would be it and along with things like making sure you're in a well ventilated area when using it so if I slip my gloves on just so somebody didn't pull me apart on social media they'll tell me they're the wrong kind of gloves I'm sure they are but they're the only ones I've got for the video demonstration purposes and if I was to open this up another exam question used to be when applying the adhesive, where do you apply it to? Do you apply it to the inside of the box or do you apply it to the conduit itself? Well, we actually apply it to the conduit. So we would apply it to the actual conduit itself, round like so, and then we would insert it into the actual box itself into position. The reason we don't insert it into the actual, into here, just putting the glue on the inside here, it can fall between the gaps. So it could come and make a barrier making it very difficult to poke the wires in where the glue has fallen between them. So we're actually gonna put the adhesive, the PVC solvent weld onto the actual conduit itself when it goes into these styles of fixings. What else have we got in front of us? We've got this, this used to come up as an assignment question and it's called an expansion coupler. What's the thinking behind an expansion coupler? The thinking being that it will allow for changes in ambient temperature and what would happen to the conduit as it gets hotter or colder, it grows or shrinks. So in warm environments, it again tends to get a little bit longer and in cold environments, it tends to get a lot smaller. I'm sure there's something else you can think about that works in the same way that you own, that in warm weather is a lot longer than it is in very cold weather. So very similar process here. And what happens is one of them is pushed into place. That's as far as it goes in. So it only goes in that far and that would be glued and held into position there within the expansion coupler itself. The second one goes in, but doesn't go all the way down to here. So it can go all the way down to there. So it would therefore go in that far. You don't put it in that far. You put it in approximately halfway. But what you do is you apply on the outside here some sort of petroleum jelly. So in other words, some sort of a mild lubricant in order that it will allow it to slide in and out with changing in ambient temperature. So what the exam question used to say is long straight runs of six meters, so in other words, two lengths, in order to stop it buckling, in other words, losing its shape, what do we need to insert? We need to insert an expansion coupler. Expansion couplers are secured at one end, can be glued in here, and the other end is allowed to freely move in and out from its position. So if I just put my finger there, so we're going out and in from that position, okay, in order to allow for changes in ambient temperature. We've got an inspection box here. We'll talk more about inspection boxes, both in steel conduit and plastic conduit, and the thinking behind those. Obviously there's a chamber here that we can remove. Our cable system can be pulled out of here and pulled back in, in order that we can wire in uh, semi-straight runs. Okay, so we've got expansion, uh, sorry, we've got inspection boxes. We also have inspection elbows, etc. And we'll show those in the workshop and in the classroom, and they're also within my notes itself. So as I said in the previous presentation about four times, that's a little bit of a, a whistle-stop tour of some of the accessories that you'll see within my notes and within the electrical workshop and within your practice on site and get familiar with them, but get familiar with the sort of things they're going to ask you under examination conditions. Sizes of conduit, 16, 20, 25 and 32 millimetres. We're talking about the expansion coupler. Can you describe how it works? with it being fixed at one end, free to move in and out the other end. The fact that we apply the adhesive to the conduit itself and not within the actual box. It comes in two standard colors, black and white. It needs to be installed in ambient temperature above zero. 
All those type of things and plenty more will be discussed within my notes and within the workshop and classroom sessions to prepare you for your installation theory and therefore onto the working life itself. So that quick look at PVC conduit, I just hope these videos have been some help.